quarantine, I was forced to shut the factory for wow. more than three months. Yes. The girls are not ready, you know? You cannot wear something, a t-shirt saying that, that like, period is power. You cannot say that. And now I have become a menstrual advocate, health advocate. The journey was long. There was this roller coaster moment, you know, COVID kicks in. You just can't go in, for instance, you know, openly talk about menstrual, uh, you know, menstruation in some places. It's like considered as a problem. Now, when you how how you discover the the business model? I, I mean, uh, as social business model, who was this person that you discovered this uh, social business? Okay, I you know that's a very good question. Uh, you know, the business model we concentrated or, or we have developed is uh, it's not like it was the buyer and seller, or we can we can have uh, you know. An agreement or contractual, you know, business transaction with the international or local NGOs. You know, focusing on the donor side mm -hmm. won't make ADEPAD sustainable. You know, of course, we need donors, we need funders. You know, uh, we need partnerships. Uh, as uh, you know, it's an early stage. We need all sorts of, you know, uh, financial income. You know, we need to develop such things, but. What you know, we took as a business business model is uh, to create a sustainable and locally known, you know, uh, strategies. Develop uh, a strategy that is more uh, accustomed to Ethiopian culture, Ethiopian norms, Ethiopian way of business doing. You know, you just can't go and, for instance, you know, openly talk about menstrual, uh, men, you know, menstruation in some places. It's like it's considered as a problem. The girls are not ready, you know? You cannot wear something, a t-shirt saying that, that like, period is power. You cannot say that. You have to develop your own, you know, an Ethiopian way. And uh, that's what we are following, you know, the business model. We train, we empower them, um, knowing the, the different region, even from regions to regions, uh, you need a different, you know, way of uh, methodology of you know training for that we use locals we use volunteers locals that are very much uh, you know that uh, accustomed to that specific areas we gather information prior from you know uh, uh, giving out or going for a donation so the business model is um, a, a different way uh, uh, a local way we adapt with localization, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, donors will leave you, uh -huh. uh, will end, but what you can build, you know, a self sufficient way of, uh, you know, creating uh, an Ethiopian model, an Ethiopian w uh, methodology, an Ethiopian um, anything will be a sustainable one, will be the only reliable um, way we can go. Because we have seen through COVID that. You know, those donors who have been, you know, giving, you know, be it, uh, a loan or money are now on a financial constraint themselves. Mm -hmm. They were forced to shut because of the travel ban and anything. Mm -hmm. We have seen different So we try to come up with our own way, with our own thinking. Uh, of course, we need to go a long way. We are now restructuring our you know, strategic plan for the next, you know, three to five years, you know. Mm. We are almost reworking everything, restructuring ADE again. Because through expansion, mm. things are becoming, you know, overwhelming. And for for that, we have, we're very lucky that volunteers are, you know, coming, you know, to help in any ways, you know. Those business experts, uh, the social entrepreneurs, uh, some NGOs are also coming as a way of, you know, helping in restructuring um, how we can, you know, uh, we can take a roadmap and everything. So let me see if I am understanding. Your business model is first you go to the schools with yeah. the local people, you train to the girls about menstrual health in their cultural way You're to right. make empathy yeah. and then you can sell your product. Yes, usually selling comes um, 
uh, still we look for you know uh, partnership with mm -hmm. be the local uh, government organization or international government organization other than that we follow our own way uh, like working with the locals with the volunteers mm. usually usually like i can say uh, 70 percent of our you know income is through donations mm, through partnerships okay. you know a certain NGO will be interested to, to Hello? Yes, I know. Uh, you're, well, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you on WhatsApp. <laughs> ah, it's, it's, it's arriving right now, the message. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the network actually is funny because the network in Mexico and Ethiopia is bad, both sides. <laughs> so, don't worry. So, you were telling me uh, your business model now is 70% around uh, donations, so we just that support you. Donors will come, they will buy from us, okay. and there are specific places. Actually, working with donors or you know uh, creating partnership with the be it, uh, the government or international donor is that there are places that are very very much far away, very remote area. So logistic is a big headache, you know, as a startup company, you cannot there through so many issues. You know, security is one issue as as well. You know, there are you know sensitive areas now, red zone areas previously in the northern part of Ethiopia because of the war outbreak. Mm -hmm. So for such and such people, they really are a very great school and we need, you know, partners, you know, to for scalability and you know reachability as well. So 70% works that way, you know, they reach in very remote areas and the business model that we adopt is working with volunteers where, you know, they can deliver the item in a, to a destination that is very remote even again. So they do this freely once we give them the product. We create a matchmaking and they will take care of the logistics and you know the supply chain and they give us you know uh, an evidence that the students or the moms received these hygienic kits. And the other one is our collaborative work with an amazing initiative, uh, I Care and Jugnet Ethiopia. They are the pioneers of the uh, They have been in period poverty uh, movement, uh, creating so many campaigns and advocacies with the government as well, on tax, on availability, you know, on, on so many issues. Uh, these are uh, our projects. The hygienic kit, for instance, the brick kit, is a collaborative work with Icare and the Ethiopia, and that's another one. And we're very lucky to, you know, to be able to put our partner to the matter. That's that's really interesting. Now. Uh, well, I, I made your, your project because I care. I, I was following I care in Instagram and then you appear in the scene and I started following your project a few years ago. So, and I think I, I think it was during the pandemic actually. Because the, this reality hit in all Africa in general uh, very, very much. Now, 